Good morning. Uh, my name is Father Tom Keneally. I'm the archivist here at Xavier University, and I'm with my colleague Anne Wright Bost, uh, the archives librarian, and we have a very interesting film we'd like to show to you. Uh, this is a video really from about 1929 and really some kind of an old-fashioned movie uh, done in that style. And uh, there is a bit of a, a storyline here. You'll notice some of the characters are being lined up for you right here. But what happens here is that a prospective student, a high school student, is very eager to pick the right college for himself. So he consults at his father's advice, a very good friend of his father, and it just so happens that friend is as graduate as Xavier College, class of 1973. And uh, so this uh, particular old grad, as he's referred to here, speaks to this prospective student, praises St. Xavier College to the skies, and after a little bit of the history of the school, he then calls Father Brockman out on the campus of St. Xavier College, as the school was called at that time, and the student then goes out there to meet Father Brockman. So that's pretty much the story, and what you see now is this, this prospective student. His name is Jimmy Dare, as the text indicates for you, and he's meeting probably somewhere downtown Cincinnati with old grad a grad of the class in 1873. So you can see, dear old grad, how are you? Uh, old grad, as I said, was the class of 1873. So he probably started at St. Xavier College about 1867, just after the Civil War. And the program at that time was a six-year program, so he graduated in 1873. So uh, this is the conversation that's going on between them, as you can tell there, and you're given plenty of time to read it. Probably at this point, they're beginning to talk uh, about the school itself, and uh, here uh, Jimmy explains exactly why he's here, the friendship of his dad and the old grand are bringing them together. And he wants some good advice on what school to attend, and I think we know what the outcome's going to be. Incidentally, I heard this. Here we go. So his dad did not go to school, but um, his dad has every intention of making sure that he goes. And bear in mind, this is about 1929. Uh, Xavier was still St. Xavier College at that time. We didn't become a university until 1930, the following year. And their conversation continues. Now we're going to get a little bit of the history of the school in just a minute, well, once we put that cigar aside. So just 60 years ago, he was in much the same position, looking around for a good school and decided on St. Xavier College, which of course in those days was in downtown Cincinnati on the west side of Sycamore between 6th and 7th Street. And we'll see a picture of it, uh, some of the buildings here in just a minute. So the school is what's founded in 1831 and Bishop Fenwick, OP stands for Order of Preachers, he was a Dominican, DD was a Doctor of Divinity, and he founded the school and named it the Athenaeum. And, uh, we're going to see a picture of the Athenaeum in just a minute here when uh, old grad gets out his catalog of pictures. Notice the telephone there, by the way. And so we'll open up and uh, Jimmy Dare is going to move in a little bit closer so we can see some of these pictures. Bear in mind now this is the campus downtown in the early days. The old Athenaeum uh, was turned over to the Jesuits, as they're commonly known, the Society of Jesus in 1840. So eight Jesuits came in November of that year, along with Father, uh, with Father Ellett, the first president, and they took over the school and they changed the name from Athenaeum to St. Xavier College, after St. Francis Xavier, the famous missionary. Obviously, Jimmy has a few questions uh, about this building. This is the old Athenaeum building. 
this was constructed in 1831 in the original building. In 73, the Walter Hill building was, uh, had been constructed, and that's presumably where old grad would have gone to school. It was at the corner of 7th and Sycamore. And uh, we'll see another picture of it here in just a minute. This will be right after the Civil War. When Now to the right, you see what was the Walter Hill building at 7th and Sycamore. To its left, 1885, was the Motor Building. And that was the second phase of this uh, production downtown, this construction. And then in 1891, the Classroom Building was added with the Poland Chapel and Memorial Hall. And you'll get a picture of it here in a minute. It extended from the Motor Building on 7th Street parallel to Sycamore down to the church. So that's the church on the left, and that's the classroom building. And this was the very lovely chapel. It was named the Poland Chapel after the Poland family, which uh, donated the money for it, a very lovely and very spacious building. And this is Memorial Hall in the basement of the classroom building. This was a combination gym and theater. And um, this, uh, this eventually became, of course, the high school downtown. So their conversation continues, and now old grad is talking about the move to the Avondale suburb, to the Avondale campus. The property in Avondale, and the property of the university now, was purchased in 1911. But the university, or well, still college in those days, moved out here in 1919, when it formally separated from the high school. And in those days, uh, the high school was on a four-year program downtown, and the college became a four-year college program out here. So I want to say the old grad's doing a pretty good job here. Seems to be selling the school very well. And uh, it looks as though um, Jimmy Dare is getting very interested. That's a pretty good plug for this promotional film. We couldn't do a whole lot better today, I don't suppose. And now he's going to get on that phone that you've been seeing there, and he's going to call Father Hubert Brockman, who was president of the college. And the college at this point, bear in mind, is now out on the F and Dale campus. Father Hubert Brockman was a native Cincinnatian. Uh, he was actually a member of St. Xavier Parish downtown, went to the school, became a Jesuit, and came back as president in 1923 and remained president until 1931, the time of his very untimely death. Uh, a very, very fine man. The great building era of the university took place during his presidency. So they say goodbye now. This is the last you'll see of the old grad as he fades away there. And what you'll now see is a picture of the uh, Avondale campus. And uh, you'll see Jimmy driving up in his very, very fancy car here. I, this, I suspect, is Father Nolan going down the steps at Hinkle Hall. The car is pulling up there on the what is still the University Drive. And uh, Jimmy Dare is going to get out in a moment. And uh, notice Victory Parkway at the foot of the hill there. And beyond it is the football stadium, Corcoran Field, that we'll talk about later on. And uh, Jimmy's getting out of the car here, Jimmy Dare. This entranceway does, it has been considerably changed since this time. They, uh, they've simply been re-landscaped and the steps have been put in at a different angle. But this is definitely Hinkle Hall, which was the Jesuit residence, incidentally, and starting in 1920. And the president's office at that time was on the very first floor. And there's Hinkle Hall, called the Administration Building. And uh, as I say, built in 1920. And you'll notice here that this was really, there's a very nice picture of the building, probably taken around 1929. Notice Schmidt Hall next to it. The building was really at the... Um, asked of Mrs. Frederick Wallace Hinkle, who contributed about $100,000, the first six-figure gift in the university's history, for the building of this. And, of course, her name is on it, and there she is. 
And she was very involved in Xavier affairs for many years. Um, very gracious lady and um, many wonderful things are said about her. And it's a very nice portrait of her in Hinkle Hall. And now Jimmy goes into the building and he's going to meet with the president of the president's office here. You'll see Father Hubert Brockman sitting at his desk there and a secretary there or someone helping him with work. They're passing papers back and forth. And in comes Jimmy Dare, uh, probably with the, the priest who brought him up the stairs there. They're introduced to one another and uh, then Jimmy Dare sits down and now the secretary is going to leave the room. So now a conversation and here's what uh, Father Brockman has to say. Uh, the direction of the Jesuits, based on the motto, uh, all for the glory, greater glory of God. And that's uh, in Latin, ad maiorum dei gloriam. And uh, now it's just going to be uh, shown to you here in the, the four letters that you've very often seen. A-M-D-G, ad maiorum dei gloriam. And... Uh, so presumably the conversation is going on now between Father Brockman and Jimmy Dare. And this is kind of a summary of it. Names to train full capacity all the faculties of the student. It's also interesting in some of the things not covered in this video, but we'll talk about those a little bit later on. So the conversation goes on. This is Hinkle Hall. Although the following year, the president's office did move next door to um, Albers. So now he's going to get on the phone and he's going to call one of the seniors in the college. His name is Jack Bates in the film. And Jack Bates is going to show up here in a minute and he will take uh, Jimmy Dare for a tour of the campus. So the phone call is taking place there. I love those phones. It's a wonderful picture of Father Brockman and the University of very much in his debt. And here's Jack Bates, senior, and uh, he's going to escort um, Jimmy Deere around campus. Uh, we're going to hop around here a little bit, but I'll try to explain for you the exact various things that you're seeing. So Jack uh, shake, shakes hands with Jimmy, and Father gives final instructions to them. And they leave uh, Father Hubert Brockman's office, and he can now get back to work. This is the building next door. Uh, this is the Schmidt Library Building, named after Walton Seaton Schmidt. And they're going up the steps into that building. A lot of things in that building. Go through that door, and then the second door beyond it, you entered Bellarmine Chapel, the original Bellarmine Chapel, established in 27th England. And they're inside the building now. The library was on the second floor, uh, what is today the Connaughton boardroom, and the stacks for the library would have been off to the right. And here's the Dean of Man. This is Father Nolan. I think we'll see a picture of him here on the outside of the building. The Dean of Man, he was, uh, among other things, the disciplinarian. And bear in mind, at this point, they had a dormitory, Ellet Hall, so he probably would have been in charge of Ellet Hall as well. And they mean. And so now we uh, go for a tour. This, of course, is the present-day Edgecliff Hall. At the time, it was the uh, Alumni Science Building. All three sciences were in there initially. But at this time, the uh, Albers building was going up to the left of Hinkle. And you'll see it here in a moment under construction. Uh, this building then became the home of the biology department on the third floor, physics and math on the second, classrooms on the first, and the president's office was moved over there. Father Alphonse Fisher, an important person, he's the uh, faculty director of athletics, but he was also the director of the St. Xavier Church Free Day Nursery. The parish ran a free day nursery for the children in the neighborhood. His mothers had to work. And Father ran that for many years. He was a very great man. Here's the athletic council. Now, how exactly this fits in, I'm not quite sure, but there are the members of the athletic council. Bear in mind, football was a very big deal at this time. That gentleman who just stood for a moment, 
uh, is Walter Seaton Schmidt, and he was chair of the board. That's he, and uh, the library was named after Walter Seaton Schmidt, and uh, the field house that we'll see later on was named after his parents. Uh, in their memory because uh, he was the principal. This is Joe Meyer and he's uh, appearing before the uh, board because he's the uh, the coach of the football team.